Okay. Let's go ahead. Um, just tired legs coming in late from Miami. Second night of the nah, day. I don't, you know, I, I don't think that's, you know, we don't want to offer that because you're going to have tired legs a lot and you want to be able to play through that. So we, we, were, we didn't have competitive fire at the beginning of the game and when you don't have that it's it's hard to generate it. We, we tried, there were stretches where you could feel, you know, uh, energy pick up but they didn't feel us early. I mean, they're the, they're the third most efficient defense in the league. I'm just curious what you saw from them that maybe made it hard for guys to get shots to fall. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, Allen, particularly in pick and roll, is, you know, is really good, his ability to kind of be up, you know, and have a presence up the court and then, and then his mobility to protect the rim. But, you know, our, the key for us is the connectivity that, that we have on the offensive end. And, you know, over the course of the game, when you have that, you know, you get, you know, better opportunities. I did think we, there were stretches where we had some good shots and, and didn't make them. Um, and sometimes it's like that, but there's there's other things I think that we can control um, that will help us. Coach, when you talk about this team being connected, exactly kind of what does that look like offensively and defensively to you? Well, I mean, we haven't played well offensively, you know, in a few games, but we've been really good on defense. So um, those last couple games is what it looks like when guys are helping each other. And uh, when I say helping each other, I mean just being shifted, um, getting people off glass, getting back, you know, all the things fundamentally that we talk about all the time when we're executing those things. You know, usually good things happen. Um, and the same thing offensively, you know, our spacing, our ball movement. Taking open shots, um, playing together. Yesterday, I asked about Sadiq and his mm -hmm. shooting slump, and today, not a great night for him. Just how do you coach a guy through nights where the the ball just really isn't going in? It might go halfway down, pop back yeah, up. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, I have so much belief in Sadiq, mm -hmm. and he's you know he's a rock. His competitiveness, you know, his focus, his work ethic. And, uh, you know, he had a few tonight, too, that um, another thing you said were right yeah. there and they just kind of rimmed out and just want him to, to, to keep at it and know the confidence that I have in him and his teammates have in him. And, you know, everybody goes through stretches like that. And, uh, he's one of those guys that it, it, I'm sure it eats at him. Um, you know, we just want him to keep, you know, keep competing and keep playing and keep working. Is there any update on Troy? I saw him go to the back at the end. Yeah, I think he's concussed. I, the, 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 our uh, health performance folks will have more information um, after he's evaluated. I, I speculating to a certain point, but that's he got hit in the head. Could could I should say could be. Coach, we're a little bit over the halfway point of the season uh, as well as game. What do you feel that this team uh, is at right now, and, and what are you looking for them to improve on the rest of the season? We've been mercurial, you know. Um, we've had m moments during the course of games where we find something that, you know, that I think is to help us be successful, and then there's other times we um, we get away from it. You know, and I think that sometimes that's our opponents. Um, and people aren't always going to let you do what you want. Uh, you know, but the halfway point is kind of an artificial number. It's a good time to evaluate it, no question. Um, you know, we were, we, we've been a different team, say, you know, three games prior than we were tonight. And you can look at the variables involved in that, whether it's, you know, the emotional high of a big win, some travel, um, you know, but I, I think that's the challenge for us is mentally to, to find consistency in, in how we play. And because we've touched some things that are really good, and we've also had moments that, that aren't so good. Just uh, you stay at it. You keep grinding. And you know, I mentioned the other day. I think from the standpoint that you know we want to consistently compete throughout the course of the game, every possession. And we want to be unselfish in all those situations. 
if we can keep working towards those ends, um, we'll continue to see better and better results. Coach, when you start uh, Sadiq and Jalen and, and Clint, you've got three really good offensive rebounders. How do you sort of balance getting them their opportunities to crash, but also having a couple of people back for, for the transition defense? Well, there's a number of situations. When you don't crash, when the ball's in the air, you, you know, you, you've got to get back immediately. You can't watch. Um, one of the times that that's the most difficult is, you know, when if there's a drive, if any of those guys, if anybody drives, you know, your floor balance isn't great. Um, we encourage those guys to crash when they, opportunistically. Um, and usually it's not the crashing that gets you in trouble in transition defense. It's the the reaction that you have if you're watching the ball, not crashing or not getting back to you. You can't be caught in between. You can't be in purgatory. And, uh, when that happens, it's difficult to recover. And then, you know, there are certain times, um, good shots, you have a better chance of rebounding. You know, so we've got to make sure, as much as anything, I'm not as concerned about them crashing. Um, you know, that, that's something that we can live with. It's, it's when we're not doing either one of those things.